Guys, I'm sorry, this clan battle was just... Uh, hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and I know it's been a while. I'm sorry for that. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about Clan Battle 2. And to be honest, I really wanted to make so many videos before it actually started or even during it because I was recording so much footage. Okay, let me stop rambling and stick to the format. So first off, I'm just going to give some thoughts, I guess, behind Clan Battle 2, how I felt it went. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of like important learnings that I got. So this includes a lot of mechanics such as like overflow scamming or overkill sync attacks, animation cancelling, timeline in, etc. Obviously, I don't think I can cover all of these topics in this one video, so I'm just going to probably give a summary. And if they're pretty short, I'll probably try to like give it all. But I'll definitely come out with more detailed videos such as like how to timeline effectively or like overflow scamming, stuff like that. But really, to sum up Clan Battle 2, man, it was a real <laughs> shit show. All right, before anything, let me apologize again for not uploading during CB2. I had the content ready. I had recorded a couple of timelines. And before you know it, lap one finished and then everything was dead and then everything was closed i was like well why can't i go back i can't I, where's my content but then i reviewed a couple of the videos and then i was like wow man wait a second these a couple of these are really steep like hitting 833k on wyvern stage one that's probably something that most people aren't able to hit i know a lot of you are actually pretty good and like in top 10 top 25 even top 50 guilds you guys probably have the prerequisites to this r83 like akari five star borrow makoto three like these this is pretty standard but like this is wyvern lap one and then it died like almost instantly by the time i knew what to do you guys probably already finished it so it's for reasons like that that i was like man it's not just just not worth it for you guys or for me i do have a lot of footage especially from lap two as well like for the timelining video i really do want to teach you guys more transferable skills i don't want to just give you guys a timeline and be like okay at 56 you use makoto yubi or something it's going to be completely different to everyone and i just want to show you guys like you know how to actually come up with your own timelines and so that's how that idea died and then we got to lap two and then we kind of nothing just worked and it kept not working and like by the time we actually actually started to figure things out like day three was already over like this was a tough one guys a really really tough cb and i just wanted to talk a little bit more about like why it was tough and stuff so like we and probably presumably a lot of the other top 10 guilds did a lot of like prep this potentially includes like translations or like making like massive amounts of notes and building the team comps and writing the timelines what most of us didn't realize is probably like you know a lot of the timelines that were built for cn or for jp they didn't work because the max level for us was only 85 and rank 8 3 equipment has actually changed everything for us because for example like you can't like tp charge or survive like this orc just wrecks everybody and for example on the fourth boss you couldn't get like for example makoto or kari yubi off before the boss actually stuns all of your units and then the timeline just dramatically changes after that so we had to build our own as always there are a few different ways to interpret this like some people are gonna like this right like it means that everyone kind of has a more even playing field the chinese or the japanese or whoever vets like you know they'll have to relearn and remake new timelines and they can't just like rip off of like existing timelines from other servers personally if i had more time i would be in this boat like it really keeps things exciting in my opinion there's a lot more theory crafting and it doesn't feel like everything has already been like pre-decided i just think it really opens up for a lot more creativity and it's just more overall more exciting i unfortunately also wish to make videos for you guys so like when the timelines didn't work like i had to spend so much time refining them and again by the time i did the time it's, they were already obsolete i personally hope the veterans or the other translators or whoever like i hope they feel a similar way despite the advantages being stripped away from them at the end of the day it made it all the more competitive and i think it well, i think it was a lot more fun i definitely 100 percent do understand the other side of the story though because like you know so much preparation so much time spent translating and building comps and theory crafting all just down the drain for us for the most part we didn't have a single vet but we like prepped so much especially with like translation and timelines and the team comps and then for it to actually just go like poof and then it's like it's gone none of the stuff that you translated or like the team comps you put together none of them work honestly it was kind of disheartening and my heart does go out to all the people who actually had the ambition and the productivity and the passion to actually try get an advantage by looking at these future resources i really really do value and applaud that productivity all right with that being said i'm going to share a few things a couple of the learnings that came out of the cb like there are going to be a lot of generic things because i want to you know i'm always of the mind of you know teach a man how to fish rather than give him a 
fish. That's how it goes, right? And yeah, looking more at the approach I took because every CB is going to be different, right? I think moving forward, every CB is going to actually continue being different because of this funky schedule. I think Crunchyroll might have actually purposely misaligned the clan battle to like the rank 88 or whatever level increases just so that they can keep it a little bit spicy and pretty fresh. No more rambling. Let me talk about what I learned. So the first thing is feeder guilds or clans. So it's not actually CB specific. Uh, oh no, this is my main account. For example, after every CB, you can just get kicked out of your clan. Like we're already have it's already 27 out of 30 actually what you can do is make a bunch of alts level them up to max level and kind of like they're kind of your feeder accounts you put them all into the same guild and when you're not in clan battle you can just get yourself kicked from the main guild and then join the feeder guild and then feed yourself equipment what this means is that every day you can get yourself a 1 to 1.5 extra equipments like the r83 or the r85 variant because you can request every eight hours up to 10 pieces each right so that's like 10 10 10 if you had like even just five people doing it and like you know everyone was running one alt each like this would be really worth it however we only had like maybe two or three people do it so it was not that worth it's just really time consuming now why would you do this is because it actually frees up your stamina to do other things with most notably hard shard farming there are just so many good hard shards to farm and like those equipments they take a lot of stamina if you could instead devote that stamina to hard shard farming and then use the stamina from your alts to actually feed equipments to your main account then you can already see how you can benefit so hard again i do not recommend this for like the more casual even like the hard hardcore players like a lot of people are gonna burn out doing this if you are exceptionally addicted to the game however i do recommend this like this is probably the most efficient way to play i'm talking you know life is with a lot of time on your hands like this is the way to go but otherwise to be honest like for me like i'm working full time and it's really taking a toll on me and it's burning me out of the game right now i'm still maintaining maybe four or five accounts and it's still burning the hell out of me i really want to drop them all right let's get into our next point which is the macro gameplay so i'm talking more the attack allocations into each boss by the time you finish your time Timeline and you realize that you can't just use any comp anywhere, right? Because like, for example, the, this boss just chunks your front line and they'll just instantly die. What is really, really important is that you make sure that you get all of like the optimal comps into the optimal bosses. For example here, this Wyvern comp, like this probably performs better on Wyvern than on other ones. If I was to run this comp into the Orc Chief, it'd probably perform like 200k less or something. Orc Chief probably demands his own comp because like he does so much damage. So this comp probably worked, especially for phase one. Come to think of it, I don't think this actually worked for phase two. Typically, you're going to have three comps, right? This is what we call the Kokoro comp or like the Kokoro switch comp if we do use Kokoro switch. This one we call the Jun or the Saren or the battery comp. And this last one is what we usually call the Xiaodidi or like the DD. Like DD does mean like, you know, penis in Chinese, but it also means like, you know, the crappy comp. So as you can see, we have like two real juicy comps and then we have the DD. Obviously, one day we hope that the DD can grow into something bigger, but you know, today is not that day. So yeah, we found that this Kokoro comp actually worked quite well on Wyvern in phase two even with just a couple of mod Modification. So we tried to actually dump all of them into that. I think for like phase two Orc Chief, I don't know if I did it, but like we, for some of the comps, like we had to replace with Miyako. It just got real spicy. Guys, don't take this one as a baseline. This is actually a really, really crappy attack. For Minotaur, we found a comp that did about 330k. And then so we had everyone make exactly the same comp and dump it into Minotaur. So it's just stuff like that. You know, like you have three comps and then like each comp has an optimal boss to hit. And then you just need to like say, okay, well, I'm going to dump like 30 of these comps into this boss. All right. That's enough about that. Let's start talking about a little bit more about the micro gameplay. And I'm just going to touch briefly on this stuff. So the first topic is timelining and here I've got like a Wyvern comp. I'm pretty sure it's like one of the variants of the Kokoro comp. Yeah, so you can see I've replaced Kokoro out with Miyako because that's the only that way that we could survive on Wyvern. All right, so here we go. I just wanted to show you quickly like the importance of timelining, right? If I can get that away, okay. Like, you know, you just, there's so many things going on, right? And the, the biggest things that you want to do of things like, you know, stacking debuffs up and only using UBs then, and then like, you know, which units do you replace? How do you survive? How do you do like the bare minimum to survive to also get the maximum amount of damage? If I quickly scrub to the end, this one, I, I think I did like 540K. I don't know that kind of sounds like suck i know but still so this one i'm pretty sure i'm just going to order the entire one so let's have a look at how much i actually get to so before was 540k and this one was 480 491k guys i gained a total of like 60k from doing the non-auto the manual method right it just goes to show like how important timelining is like you know imagine if all of your members actually picked up 60k from not autoing and actually manually 60k on a timeline multiplied by 30 people multiplied by a 1.2 times score rate man that's big numbers on the micro level i think you already understand how important that is now again i will come out with a more detailed explanation on how to timeline it's actually extremely 
extremely complicated. <laughs> okay, that's not really entirely true. It's just a little bit hard to teach, I think. But yeah, let's save that for another video. So you can see I've got a couple of footages. Uh, one of my uh, clan mates, they were so dedicated to the timeline. I think they had like over 300 like videos. They were just, they've trialed so many times. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is animation canceling. So this is actually the same footage. And let me see if I can actually find some animation cancels here. What the premise of animation canceling is, is that the duration of the skill or like is actually a bit longer than when that damage actually hits. This actually also applies to effects as well. So for example, Susana buffs herself. It actually takes like three seconds, for example, for the whole animation to play out. But by the time 1.5 seconds has passed of the three seconds, you know, she's already gotten the buff. And so what do you do with that last 1.5 seconds? You want to animation cancel it with the union bursts. So what's going to happen probably is that I'm going to probably animation cancel like Makoto's attack, right? So what this means is like Makoto is going to swing her blade. I'm going to see the number pop up. When I see the number pop up, it means that it's actually registered the hit on the Wyvern. And at that point, I can actually activate her UB so that she cancels the rest of the swing. For example, she swings her blade like that, but really the damage is applied when the blade is already here. So that means all of this animation is actually wasted time. If you animation cancel, it means that she'll actually get to her next attack faster. So hopefully she'll be able to get more attacks in. So guys, here is the example. Makoto is going to slash. The moment the number comes up, I'm going to activate the UB. Ready? Slap UB. Right, because there's also, it's not just the slash itself, right? Because there's also an aftercast. There's a lot of time spent just like waiting around from the characters and that is, that is just a lot of lost time that they could be using towards their next action. So another very common one is Susana. So you're gonna see me animation cancel her buff. Watch closely, she's gonna have a couple of arrows. When I realize she has a buff, I'm gonna actually UB. Okay, here we go. Did it, did it. So it's about like two arrows. You see the buff icon has actually already arrived here, right? When this icon is already here, it means that she has already been buffed, even though the animation hasn't fully played out. And so therefore, if I hit the UB, she already has the buff. I don't need anything else from that skill and I can just chunk this woman. Probably 51k? Come on, okay, 47, right? There's a whole bunch of other animation cancels. Like for example, Mitsuki's animation cancel is on like her flower. So if I just quickly show you, you see that this is a flower, right? This, <laughs> no, it's a flower. Flower. This flower in her hand after it disappears is when you can actually animation cancel. So let's see if I animation cancel. So I actually don't. So the moment I saw the flower disappear, they actually get the debuff up here. So I should have hit Mitsuki's UB the moment this disappeared. So I actually recorded this footage before I knew this. So this was a failed animation cancel for me. But you can see like, you know, this... Oh, okay. Well, that was actually quite fast to be honest, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty good, what can I say? But yeah, that's kind of the basics of animation canceling. It's like the moment the effect has applied or the damage has applied, hit the UB so that you don't have to see the rest of it. All right guys, that's pretty much animation canceling in a nutshell. I'll probably stop there and like, I'll try to see if there are more like character specific animation cancels and probably put them together so that we can actually utilize them. So next thing I want to talk about is sync attack. So Minotaur, right? Minotaur is the B5 boss. He is the main posted girl of the uh, clan battle. So I'm pretty sure that all B5 bosses, at least in phase two, have an enrage mechanic. So for enrage, after Minotaur, for example, drops below 50% HP, he suddenly gains a lot of attacks. So there's a way to kind of circumvent this and we call it a sync attacks. So what we mean by sync attacks is like we lower, I think Minotaur's HP is about 20 million. So we lower it to about 10.5 million. So we're kind of just above the 50% threshold, but one attack wouldn't take it below it. So our attacks on Minotaur averaged about 330k at 10.5 mil it's not going to drop Minotaur below the 10 mil mark. And this is what you want, right? Because you don't want the enrage to trigger like in the middle of your battle. So what happens next is we actually prepare for the sync attack. So what we did was we got everyone's schedule and then we got everyone to actually come in at a specified time. For our successful sync attack, we got, I think, 28 people to all enter Minotaur at the very same time. When everyone enters at the same time, the server still thinks like the Minotaur has 10.5 mil HP. So what happens is everyone enters, then pauses. We make sure that everybody is in and sees the 10.5 5 mil HP. And then once we verify that we've got as many people as we can, we get, then just get everyone to release the attack. So go on, hit the boss and just finish it off. Because everyone is attacking from 10.5 down to about 10.2 mil, nobody from these 28 or 30 attacks or whatever are actually going to encounter the enrage mechanic. So this means for like 28 or 26 or whatever attacks that we would have done, like we actually bypass the enrage mechanic. This is probably going to be quite useful for the next few bosses moving on. I'm pretty sure enrage just gets worse and worse, but that's another thing that you can take back to your guilds. For more casual clans, this is probably 
probably going to be a bit harder. The last thing I want to talk about is carryover. So there are a couple of things going around, like, you know, the people are saying, oh, overkill or overflow or whatever, this or that. Um, I'm going to give you something a little bit simpler that you guys can use right now without any coordination. Overflow scamming is quite complicated. I'll probably talk about it in another video, but I don't think I have enough time to cover it now. This video is already extremely long. What you could do is you could actually bring Monica over in one of these bosses. Say the boss only has like 100k HP left and you do like 300k damage. You can take Monica in the team and what happens is that you're going to beat this boss with Monica's big, big attack buff and then you can actually use it again when you enter the next boss with the overflow. What this means is that you actually get to trigger her passive twice, once during the orc boss and once during your overflow into the next one. It's one way to make the most out of your carry over. Like, you know, if new units come out with similar mechanics, you know, just like at the very start of the stage, they get some massive buff. You can definitely do that again. As for overflow scamming, I'll cover that in another video. This is already probably going to be like 20 minutes long. Guys, again, I'm really sorry for not uploading. This has been a very stressful five, six days. It's been torturous, actually. I don't know where we're going to end up. Maybe top 10, maybe, I don't know. Who, who knows, right? All I know is that we tried our best and I hope you guys did too. And what's even more important than that is that you guys had fun because I feel like a lot of people are going to burn out or quit from like encountering that Minotaur. What I can tell you guys right now is that the next ones are going to be significantly easier than the Minotaur. Significantly easier because like, a, they're just mechanically easier, but also B, you guys will probably have hopefully caught up in terms of levels and stuff. There's going to be a lot of 2x drops. There's going to be hard mode farming. There's going to be, there's just going to be so many events for you guys to actually do some catch up. There's going to be the Mimi event, probably hopefully get a Mimi 3, Mimi 4, something like that. But all right, I'm going to stop rambling, but somehow I managed to keep rambling and ugh, I wish I could talk about this stuff all day, guys. All right, with that being said, that's the end of the video, guys. I'm going to call it a wrap here. I'm going to leave you guys with the secret message, CP2 hurts. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that. It tells me that you've made it to the end of the video and it just makes it all worth it to me. I don't think there's anything left to say except thank you guys so much for watching. I apologize again for going MIA. If you like this video, share, subscribe, follow, whatever it is. Again, for the last time in this video, but not forever. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.